People got to be prepared, man. They have to be. Did, prepared. Well, did you see the the Obama film uh, "Leave the World Behind"? I didn't. It, it's okay, but it showed because they're coming out with the second part of it. The bartering power, mm-hmm. and there was an accident, and this kid got bit by a tick or something and got infected. Yeah, and it would have killed him. And they needed antibiotics. And the guy said, "I know who has some." They pull up. He pulled a shotgun on him. And said, "No, you get off my property. I'm not giving you anything. I took care of my family." So they end up bartering to get antibiotics off really? the guy. Is that on Netflix or is that on Hulu or what? I think it's on Netflix. Okay, I'm going to check that. Leave out. the world behind. And it it makes you never want to live in a city. You know, we were moving. We're, we're, we, let's let's wait. Yeah. Because let's get started because we yeah. can get into some really good shit. Hey, I don't want to waste it. You know what I'm saying? Abs- well, we're already recording. Oh, we are? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'll let you go then. We'll get into it. But it makes you never want to live in a city. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, we had, we were moving to Huntsville just to get out of the city and, um, you know, some unfortunate, uh, I guess, events in our life where our our parents are getting older. Yeah. You know, so part of me feels a little guilty moving away from my folks. Um, And, um, you know, just within the last two weeks, I I woke up. I mean, we we had bought three acres in Texas Grand Ranch. That's a big, uh, uh, you know, conservative area. Michael Berry uh, always promotes that and whatnot. But we bought three acres up there, dream property, man. Beautiful, sitting next to seven acres of forest preservation. So technically we're sitting on 10 acres. Um, I just had it cleaned about two weeks ago. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, man, like the older I get, the closer I, you know, realize that things just don't matter anymore, you know. And having less overhead to me is more important. And so we started looking at, or I started looking at, you know, just because I can doesn't mean I should, you know, financially. And, um, you know, for me, it was two weeks ago, Wednesday, I could not sleep. I didn't sleep at all. It was way and heavy on my heart, you know, just like, all right, we're going to be close to a million dollars into this property once we're all said and done. You know, my parents are getting older. Things happen. The world has gone absolutely apeshit crazy. Um, <laughs> yes, it has. You know, I would feel guilty if I something were to break break away and, you know, get nuts. And I'm, you know, up in the country and my parents are down here having to deal with idiots. Um, and, you know, we had my stepfather has an early uh, diagnosis of dementia, Alzheimer's. Uh, you know, my mom had a heart attack a couple years ago. My stepmother's... Um, hit and miss on how she's feeling and um you know i just woke up that you know after not sleeping on a wednesday i woke up on thursday morning and just said i you know i gotta do what's right financially i gotta do what's right by my family call my cousin who's you know really like my brother you know that we're that close and said hey he's a realtor i said hey meet me for lunch what's wrong oh we'll talk to you about a few things and went and had lunch and said man i'm I'm decided, I'm decided not to move to the country, even though I want to. Uh, it's just not the right time. And um, I said, why don't you take me show you, show me some houses? He's like, when? I was like, now. He's like, oh, you're serious. I was like, <laughs> He's yeah. like, I like this. Yeah, I'm like, I'm dead serious. Let's go. So, man, we went and looked at about 20 houses, about four or five different neighborhoods up in the League City, Friendsport area. And uh, literally by the end of the day, I had a house picked out. <laughs> I didn't That's even awesome, tell my man. wife. She got home. I'm like, hey, we're not moving. She's like, what? And then she felt relieved, too. My wife, I love her to death, but she's a worry wart when it comes to, you know, finances and stuff. And So uh, we had we'd bought a house the next day. And, I mean, just completely turned our world upside down in the last two weeks. But, you know, man, I do worry about being in heavily populated areas. And I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist and I'm not an alarmist, but I, I do um, – but I think you have a more realistic outlook on how things can turn than most I, people. I think I do, depending upon who you ask. Some people may disagree, but, you know, um, for me, it you have to look at historical events and recent patterns um, of behavior. Um, I think there's certain things that we need to look at, like uh, political divide, um, race relations in the United States, um, po- politics um, in general. Um, and um, what I think is the degradation of the moral American, you know, family. Um, and yeah, I, I would I would be um, completely full of shit if I didn't tell you that 
I wasn't worried about living in a, a more highly populated or densely populated area. Um, and it is, it is incumbent upon us as men to defend our families and take care of them. Um, and how it's our responsibility, it is our responsibility. The, the, the book says that, right. The Bible says that, right. And I'm not trying to get spiritual or anything, but it's a truth um, though. I mean, it, it is really the truth. is. It's a principle. That's so, true. you know, however you prepare, what I tell people is that, you know, you need to be somewhat prepared, have a plan, you know, have a way to defend yourself, um, have a, a way to, uh, nourish yourself and your family um so yeah we'll be moving to the friendswood league city area in the next two weeks and you know it is what it is i'm not really concerned yeah well uh, and, i mean and, i'm concerned but i'm not not concerned for me <laughs> i mean and that's a good area i mean know, that's still that's a great area yeah it's a great area we're looking forward to it i'm just you know going from having to spend you know thinking you're gonna have to spend million dollars on a house or a million dollars on a property once it's all said and done to spending half that and putting down a, a substantial amount of money to reduce that that debt you know it's pretty good one of the things my dad always taught us growing up is always live below your means and if you live like nobody else now mm-hmm. when you're older you'll be able to live like nobody else yeah oh that's a good one and I've tried to do that. You know, when you're young, you make some stupid financial decisions. Right. But now that I've gotten older, there's certain things I'm like, no, nah, I don't need that. Yeah. But but per, being being a father, being a man, having family, I'm, you know, when dealing with the same thing since I've seen you last, my father, you know, he had a stroke. Uh, then he that. then he uh, had to go in and have a, um, a hiatal hernia fixed. And just to watch, you know, now that he's right at 70 – the you know that you know dad the hero which he still is but they just don't bounce back no like they used he's to 70 he uh, he'll be 70 here in just a yeah just a few months but you, you start thinking about those things and you, you know what i live on and it's all family here yeah. so so it's great but even even though it's all family we still take care of our own households meaning I have my household taken care of. Right. My brothers have their house. In the event, and if anybody's listening, I'm going to plug Augustan Farms. Go to Augustan Farms. Follow them on Prime. Buy a couple pails. Get get two or three months of food set aside. If you never need it, it sits there for 25 years. <laughs> but if you do need it, you know, I had a I had a, a, a girlfriend of mine was trying to tell her, hey, where you live, you need to get prepared, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean crazy, but just what is it to just buy an $80 pail and throw it and, and forget about it? Right. She said, well, I'll just come to your house. I said, no, you no, won't. You won't. <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. Because You're if you, not welcome. If you come to my house, then if you have Susie Joe show up with the baby, and it, well, I don't, but I know somebody who has food, and then I help her, and then she tells somebody else and somebody else, and you know how the the – the chain, you don't need a uh, social media for yeah. that stuff to get around. And, yeah. and, and that's not living in paranoia. It's yeah. just doing what we need to do I'll as men. You, um, 20, uh, 2010, 2011 is when I got transferred to Washington, D.C. Uh, for the uh, presidential counter assault team and uh, presidential detail uh, when I was with the Secret Service. And, um, I, you know, I, I guess for me, I, 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 I know what the world is capable of. Um, I know how to defend myself. I never worry about someone attacking me because I know what my capabilities are. Um, and that's foolish to think that way, really, because even the best of us can... can Get caught off guard. Get caught off guard, absolutely. And there's always somebody better, right? But um, my wife, <clears throat> in, when we moved to D.C., you know, we were about 40 miles south of D.C., uh, we lived in a rural area, and um, uh, we lived also near a, a nuclear power plant, uh, which was south of us, about probably another 30 miles. Um, I don't know. For whatever reason, she just felt like we needed to have a supply of uh, food rations. And so initially, <laughs> I thought she was crazy, but I'm glad that I have it because I bought it in 2012. It's got a 25-year shelf life. It's uh, and This is a shameless plug but i don't get anything from these folks but it's wise food company I oh think yeah people know wise i have some of their right? uh their deals that slide under your bed oh yeah. yeah so so back then it was like two grand and i thought to myself what the hell we're gonna spend two thousand dollars on some shit that we probably will never need but i tell you what two grand peace of mind knowing that your family of four is going to be fed for a year 
because we bought um, we bought a year's worth, and uh, it's sitting in a climate con- controlled storage right now. Been there, you know, for the last ten years, twelve years, and um, I still got another twelve years shelf life on it. And I told the wife that that said in about four years we need to sh- sell that. Yeah. You know, for a fraction of the cost, because somebody will buy it. And, and now then, the and prices have replenish. come down because yeah. there's so much competition yeah. out there. Yeah, and so uh, I've got 35-gallon buckets of uh, of um, food rations. And, um, you know, and you know what else I did is um, Sam's. Sam's or Costco, I don't know, essentially the same thing. Uh, sorry, Sam's and Costco. Uh, but <laughs> They beg to differ. I can't remember if it's Sam's or Costco, but one of them i want to say it was costco you can buy a hundred gallon um drum 55 or i'm sorry a 55 gallon drum uh yeah 55 gallon plastic drum that comes with a water filter uh that will filter 100 gallons of water for 100 bucks i bought three of them yeah i mean for 100 bucks yeah and if anybody's listening if, if you if you were looking for those tubs just remember this if they're blue or white, you can use those for yep. water. This was blue. These were blue. Yeah, if they're blue or white, but if yep. they're black, gray, yeah. tan, do Don't not use them. Do not use them. That's uh, that's uh, gray water. Um, yeah, these were blue, brand new, hundred bucks. They ship them right to the house. Filled them up with water. Put uh, purifier, you know, in there. A little bit of chlorine. I mean, a little bit of a. Uh, you're a you're a crazy prepper. I know. I'm not a prepper, honestly. God, I used to love watching either. those the that prepper movie or a prepper show on TV, and I thought them these people were just absolutely insane. Some of them are, and they give everybody a bad name. Well, the majority of them are insane, and, and you know what's crazy is it sells. It's like, you know what it reminded me of is watching those people. It's like they go, you know, these networks go find the craziest people. <laughs> because it helps their ratings. It's like it's like after a tragic event, why is it that the news media always finds the toothless individual that can barely speak in <laughs> yes. English? Yes. You know, they can oh. barely speak English to, to interview. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's it like, really is true. Wait a minute. There's a, That guy's wearing a three-piece suit. This guy looks like he's put together pretty well. He's probably well-educated. Let's go get that, uh, you know, less fortunate individual with summer teeth. And if those of you who don't know what summer teeth, it's summer here, summer there. Um, let's get that guy, that guy and let's interview that guy. You well, know? well, that guy invented the toothbrush because if it was anybody else, it would have been called the teeth brush. <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. But yeah, uh, it, it really is true. And, you know, it, what we understand about media manipulation now is oh, man. they're always going to control the narrative. Absolutely. So they don't want somebody that's going to make 100% perfect sense no. because they can't control the narrative yeah. then. And we've seen that even recently on some of the news mm-hmm. programs, even on the Today Show, where they get somebody in there and they interview them and they try to steer the narrative and they, no, you're not going to do that. And they, they hold their feet to the fire. Yeah. And there was one with Savannah Guthrie. Guthrie. Yeah. Couldn't remember her name. But you could see it in her eyes like, uh oh, I just changing the script. Yeah, like uh, what's going? What do we do? Go to commercial. Yeah, you know. But yeah, I um, I don't play those games either. You know, I've been on a lot of um, um you know, news sources, um, News Nation, Fox News, CNN. I've seen all um, your uh, seen all your all, yeah. all your spots on there. <laughs> I keep telling these people all the time, hey, look, if you want to give me a paid, um, you know, paid slot where I can, you know contribute on you know mass violence and shootings and active shootings and all of these things i'll be happy to do that but i don't think that any of them ever take me up on it because they know that they can't control my narrative and and you have know? you dealt with any sound bits or clips where they try to yeah for sure there's one on um there's one on news nation and um i can't remember the guy's name but he had beautiful hair um it, i was super envious um all the all the conservatives have the Kennedy oh, hair. He had beautiful hair. Um, I can't remember his name. I'll think of it, of course, when I leave here. But uh, I can picture his face, but I can't remember his name. But his hair was phenomenal. Um, and it, they interviewed me about um, Robert Kennedy Jr., who's running for president, being denied Secret Service um, protection by the president and Department of Homeland Security. And um, that... That was, I felt like they were trying to lead me, uh, and I wouldn't let it happen. And then the same, it wasn't the, um, yeah, it was actually, it was the same guy, same interviewer another time. 
and you probably remember this and you listeners probably remember this. I felt like they were trying to lead me and I actually called him out on it. And he's like, no, I'm not trying to do that. It was, um, the cocaine in the white house. Um, they interviewed me about the cocaine in the white house and, uh, well, they know what happened. A rat drug it in. Yeah, it was definitely a rat, but not, <laughs> not the kind that we're all thinking of. But, um, yeah, they interviewed me about that, uh, to get my, uh, my thoughts on, um, you know, why the investigation was taking so long that I feel like they already knew who brought it in. And, you know, my thing was this, is that, listen, when people think of the white house, um, they think that, and, and it is, it's probably one of the most secure sites in the United States. Um, but there is still a lot of foot traffic in and out of there. Right. Um, and what, what he was trying to get me to allude to, uh, or get me to imply is that I felt like it came from Hunter Biden. You can have a thought, but if you don't know, you don't know. You don't know, man. I mean, you know, and that's what I told him is look like, I, and I told him flat out, I, I know where you're trying to get me to go. And he's like, no, that's not, I know. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. And I'm like, no, that's what you're trying to do. That's what you're trying to do. But what I'm trying to tell you is that there are a lot of people that come in and out of the white house, secret service staff, white house staff, um, all kinds of campaign staff. Um, that cocaine could have come from anybody to say that it came from Hunter Biden. Um, it could be implied due to his, his past history. I totally see why people would understand that. I personally don't believe that it came from Hunter Biden. What I think happened is it probably came from a staffer, or it came from an individual um, who was a friend or a guest of a staffer. Um, I don't think that it happened, um, you know, on a tour. I don't think that a guest, a, a tour guest did it because they're heavily screened. Uh, yeah. Not that staff is not heavily screened, but what I will tell you is I feel like there are some, um, there's some leniency given there, especially when you see the same staffer over and over and over multiple times a day. That's what I think happened. Do I know that that happened? No, I don't know that happened. That's just me speculating. That's my opinion. But this fellow was trying to get me to basically say, oh, I came from uh, Hunter Biden. I'm not falling into that bullshit politics. I'm not furthering the political divide in the United States to fit your bullshit political narrative. That's not me. You know, I'm a conservative. I don't even consider myself really a Republican anymore. I consider myself an American. I'm a constitutionalist. You know? I'm a, yeah, I, mean, I just want what's right for everybody. Yes. You know? And that's where we need to be focused as a nation. You know, um, I have political aspirations. I'm afraid that I can't get elected because I'm not so far on one side or the other. You know, I, I don't give a damn about, you know, the party. I care about people. Does that does that put you in a position? Because I like a lot of things that Robert says. Oh, I love Robert Kennedy. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he in. It's crazy about, especially, let's just consider family history. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That they would deny, they would deny, you know, uh, protection that, you know, con just considering the family history and the craziness that is going on it's right now. It's all politics, man. And um, Joe Biden has the ability to override the Department of Homeland Security in that congressional panel. But he won't. And the reason why he won't is because he's intimidated by Robert Kennedy. And he knows that. And everybody else knows that. You put Kennedy, you put Trump, and you put Biden on a stage, Kennedy whoops all their asses. Guaranteed. I don't I don't agree with his vice presidential pick. Who is? Nicole Shanahan. I, I, I think it was Nicole Shanahan. She's the uh, ex-wife of the Google founder. Okay. Smart attorney. Come on, dude. Like, you got to pick a Tulsi Gabbard or somebody, man. You know? Come on, man. I, I think the guy seriously had a, a chance, but I don't know with his VP pick. I'm curious to see who. Um, do, do you who really picks. think we're in a place that an independent or even a, a moderate, like, do they even stand a chance to be elected in this country anymore? I think that we're closer now to that than we have been because of the political divisiveness of both parties. It's on you both know, sides. Listen, here's the deal there's a lot of Republicans that don't necessarily support Donald Trump. I'm a registered Republican, I don't support Donald Trump. But when it comes down to voting, I cannot vote for, for Joe Biden. Not because he's a Democrat, but because I worked in the White House. I know what kind of person he is. I do not support him. Yeah, yeah, you have firsthand knowledge. Yeah, I have firsthand knowledge. I also know 
regardless of what the media will tell you, the Secret Service will tell you, what anybody will tell you, the guy has cognitive decline. We've known that for a decade. You know, they're not going to tell you that. They can't tell you that. You know, anybody with a brain can see the cognitive decline. It does. You don't have to be a physician to you know, see that. You just said something that just hit. Hit. I was having this conversation with uh, Jake Lazar that was here. Those that try to control the narrative, what you just said, here is, here is the way both sides have gotten. We can see it. Then they want to come out and say, well, what education do you have to make that, that outcome? Are you a doctor? Don't need to be a I doctor. I don't need to be a doctor, but they want to make it to, well, if you're not a doctor. Then you can't have an opinion. Then you can't have an opinion, and that's yeah. just not so. No, that's not so at all. You know, at the end of the day, you know who I blame for this, for, for this political divide? I don't blame the parties. I mean, they're, they're going to do what they're going to do. I blame the people. I blame the people. And what I mean by that is we have good Republicans. We have good Democrats. We have good American citizens who are not political at all, who continue to allow this. We continue to vote in these people. Over because, and over. Because we have been manipulated by both parties to think that we have to be affiliated with one or the other that we can't be free thinkers. Free thinkers in this society get shunned. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll tell you what, I'll die on my sword being a free thinker, doing what's right for the people rather than just doing what's right by a party party. or somebody else's political narrative and what their intentions are for me. I I just refuse. I won't do it. I will not do it. There's there's a reason why I'm not um, District 23's state representative right now in the state of texas and that's because i i just refuse to follow someone else's political narrative or path i'm not going to do that they knew that there were some things that i don't agree with with the far right conservative movement and i told them flat out i am not going to vote your way just because you want me to for a you know fifty thousand dollar a year state representative seat now here's the deal i still would have had to go through a primary and 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 you know Major props to Terry Leo Wilson. She won. Um, she's the state representative there. Um, I'm not saying that I would have beat her, but I would have at least been in the primary, I think, with her. But I refuse to just concede to someone else's, you know, vision of how I think the United States should be run or this this state should be run. We have to – the people matter. and I, not I, Not Republicans or Democrats. I think where people are – at least I know myself and people I talk to – and it's not Republican or Democrat, is we have had a lot of people, and, and we talk about cognitive decline. Look at Mitch McConnell. He's been going down oh, for man. years. Look at uh, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi. Um, God. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. Oh, uh, what's the uh, Al Green? Like They say things where it's like, you have people who write your speeches. Mm-hmm. And what you just said, I know you got it wrong on the teleprompter. Mm-hmm. That makes no sense at all what you well, just said. It, you know, here's the thing, David. You know, I have firsthand experience seeing this stuff from behind the scenes. It's like, oh, pay no attention to that man behind the green curtain. Like <laughs> the Wizard of Oz, right? I've seen that shit. What I'm getting at, there is not a word spoken by any of these individuals in any planned speech that is not scripted. It's like a movie set, you know? I, I, it got to the point, and listen, I get it, right? I mean, these guys are, they have such an operational tempo and pace, you know, and they're, they're, they're going from state to state, city to city, having, you know, to talk to the same people. They have to stay on script, right? And I got to the point where I was memorizing. I mean, all of us Secret Service guys, I mean, we all memorize a speech. We, we would hear certain things and we go, okay, we got three minutes left. You know, three minutes, all right, three minutes, three minutes, you know, because we know in that part in the speech is where we're going to start making movements. But, what I'm telling you is that it's like um, some of these people don't have any original thought. Now, what I'll say, <laughs> Trump, <laughs> I don't think he follows any script. I don't know. I wasn't there during his presidency. I left right before he got there. I don't think he follows a script either. I think <laughs> oh, it's, man. it's just off the cuff. It's really bad, though. It's really, really bad, man. Um, you know, the guy's lexicon is like the, that of a third grader, you know. I, I think I, – I think – I, I don't want to, I hate to say problem, but where Trump's at is a, he doesn't care what anybody has to say because he has been the boss 
forever. Forever. And what he says goes. Yeah. And that had, and, and people loved him on The Apprentice and the way he talked to people. Well, that's... That's, that's movies, man. That's, that, that's you know, Hollywood I think shit. Ev- even if you go all the way back to the 80s, the things that he has said about the presidency, the country, different things. Is that who he is? But let's just say that's who he is. It's like, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and if you don't like it, tough. No, I think that's who he is, but I think that, you know, and, and there's a certain level of respect that I have for being an individual, right? Not being so, uh, you know, robotic, um, not being led by people who have their own agendas. Um, but this guy just, he, he is not a good representative of the people, man. I mean, you know what, what bothers me most, right? is I'm a Christian. I know you're a strong Christian. What bothers me most is that we see these Christians supporting this man because of his status, right? And they're trying to justify his actions by saying that, you know, Jesus doesn't send the perfect. He sends the imperfect to do his work. That's complete bullshit, man. Get get the fuck out of here. Uh, like you truly believe that Jesus, that God has sent Donald Trump to represent the people? I don't believe that. And, I, and I, I think, think God gets credit for a lot of things, and he's like, hey, look, I don't know if I had anything to do with that. <laughs> I, I mean, come on, man. Like you, here, Here's my question to those individuals who want to continue to say that, right? That, that, that Donald Trump has been sent here by God to save us. Let's take away the fact that he was he's a former president now running for president again. The things that he says, the things that he does, if that happened to your community, if that happened in your community, if he said or did these things to your daughter, to your wife, to your coworker, what would happen to him? Would you would you permit it? You wouldn't permit that. No. Not not at your level. Yeah. You wouldn't permit that. You yeah. know. So stop trying to hide behind the fact that your faith. You think that your faith that God has sent this imperfect man to do an imperfect job. That's not true, man. That that's bullshit. You know. Stop it. That's blasphemous. I think I think our faith needs to be grounded in definitely 100% what we believe. I'm sorry, I got somebody pulling that. Okay. Um, in what we believe and what we know to be true. We have gotten to a position that those behind the scenes know how to manipulate oh, and play on p- people's faith. Oh, yeah. Oops. To play on people's thought. And they know certain little narratives to put out there. Now, am I saying God ordained Donald Trump? Uh, I've never said that. No, yeah. I've, I've never had that thought. Yeah. Do I hope that we have somebody in office that will uphold the Constitution and our freedom of religion? Yeah. Um, and and what I'm, the reason I'm saying that, There are certain things that Christians aren't allowed to do in this country anymore, but Muslims can. Right. No, I agree. And would I vote and and move towards a guy that's going to uphold, you have the right to love and serve your God. And when you start having that that divide, that is really the state overstepping, saying, well, they can, but you can't. I I agree with you 100%. I absolutely agree with you. Um. I'm trying to word keep this worded the way that the way that it needs to be worded. You're 100 percent correct. Mm-hmm. Yes, I support anybody who is going to um, who is going to um, preside over our our country with a, with a good moral foundation, right? Um, I don't care if it's Christian or if it's Muslim or if it's Hindu, perfect example, Vivek Ramaswamy. The Hindu faith, I used to have a client, one of the largest in the world, 
that was Hindu. They're some of the most family oriented people yes, they are. in my I've ever met in my life. The guy the guy that owned where where our military shop was. Yeah. He's a Sikh or Sikh, yeah. And the greatest family oriented, kindest people you will ever meet. Morally sound. Yes. So here's my thing. Like I I am okay with us having a president that is not a Christian. As long as they're rooted in some type of faith that they use a good moral an ethical compass to to govern over the people that uphold the constitution of the United States. I love Vivek Ramaswamy. I I man, I, I was really upset that he bowed out so fast. You think he'll come in as a as a as a vice? I hope so. I mean like I said, I as much as I despise Donald Trump, I will not vote for Joe Biden over Donald Trump. I won't do it. It would just be icing on the cake if Donald Trump picked a person like Vivek Ramaswamy as his vice president or Tulsi Gabbard that, you know, we could prop up as the next president of the United States. So getting back to, you know, faith, right? Um, What I also don't want is I don't want someone to rule this or I would say rule, it's it's not a dictatorship. What I what I don't want someone to do is to govern the United States solely based upon their Christian values. Because what we've what we that's a very slippery slope also. Very right? slippery. And the reason why I say that is because I talked to you earlier about, you know, the reason why I didn't or I decided to pull out two days before my announcement of running for state rep district twenty three in Texas is because my stance on abortion. And so what I'm getting at is I truly believe in the separation of church and state. No one says that you can't pray wherever you are. If you want to go and pray privately in your classroom, do that. You want to go play uh, pray on the football field or soccer field, do that. If the group wants to do it, do that. Just don't force someone else to do it. And when you, when you start and, and we'll take a break, uh, I didn't realize we were already over the mark, but when oh, you yeah. talk about people's dedication, if you are going to use your faith as a standing point, make sure you're dedicated and you know what you know. Yeah. I was just in the hospital for a few days. The room I was in, the AC was messed up, so I would tell them, hey, just leave the door open. I was at the very end of the hallway. All day long, I watched Muslims, men and women, walk to the end, and they had a carpet. Pray. And they would sit there like a complete just cycle of rotation five times just nonstop. those people are devoted those yeah. people and then we get people that want to stand on the precipice of 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 christ and they don't even know what they know but yeah. they're just on, and you're like you're not even dedicated let's come back and you don't even know the word you don't even know <laughs> yeah you're just saying it because it's a talking point it's a talking it's, and point. you have nothing you have nothing of merit absolutely you know? so you're just using it as a talking point let's so. come let's come back and okay. 